So today, what I'm going to do is just to provide a small overview of what I have been living during the last few days, that is basically ISTA, ISTA 2023. So I'm going to provide a small summary, and really sorry if I'm mispronouncing names of institutions or people, I'm really, really sorry. There's, uh, there are a lot of different cultures here, and it's very difficult to know how to pronounce every single name. Um, and I also want to say that this specific summary is just from my own perspective about the things that I've been living doing these days in ISTA, and unfortunately I was not able to be in every single session, even today, which is Friday, I have to go back to London, so I'm going to miss the last few sessions. But it's just to, to give you an overview about all of the exciting words that are now uh, presented in this amazing conference. So I just want to give you a little bit of what is happening at the moment in software engineering and ISTA. Okay, just a small disclaimer before we proceed. This uh, video is basically about my personal experience. So basically, if I forget some papers, uh, I'm really sorry, maybe it's because I didn't uh, attend that session because I was in another session or because I was more or less receptive at that time. So that doesn't mean that some papers might not be interesting uh, or that other papers are more interesting than others. I, I think everyone who has a paper in Insta did an amazing job and I don't want to underestimate anyone. Uh, just to consider that, uh, unfortunately, you are not always very receptive or you are not everywhere. So there will be some things that I will forget. Also, actually, use this opportunity if you want to just leave comments of papers in the, in the comments of the video that I will leave open. Just leave in your comments uh, papers that you might find interesting and links to those papers. And also, if I misunderstood something or you just want to, to give some specific uh, information about your paper that I might miss or, or I just, because, you know, these are my just handwriting notes, so it's not perfect. Uh, just feel free to do it in the comments, uh, respectfully, please. I'm, <laughs> I'm not perfect, as, as, as you may know. Um, and obviously, there are details that I will forget. So uh, feel free to just keep this to communication. Also, I was in the Taro Summer School and the first task symposium. So if someone is interested for, uh, to, to have a video about a summary of any of them, just let me know. And I will also do an effort to, to put a video of both of them. OK, let's go to the video. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. On the first day, I have the opportunity to watch uh, one of the presentations of Andrea Sella. Andrea is a great researcher from the Sisma Helmond Center for Information Security. And he has been working on several different things. Like, for example, he introduced years ago the data display debugger. That was something that I was using when I was programming in C when I was an undergrad. So you can imagine um, how, how, how strong his contributions to science has been. Also, he's been working for a very long time on fuzzing, on grammar-based fuzzing, uh, and basically the presentation that he was doing was about language-based debugging. So let me just go through my notebook. I always have notes about these things. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So yeah, he was basically talking about, uh, oh yes, he was talking about the input-output grammars. And actually, it was very interesting because it was some, something from, from a student of Mark Harman. For those who don't know who Mark is, um, Mark Harman is, um, is a professor at UCL in software engineering, and he was the head of my research group when I was working at UCL as a postdoc. Um, Mark moved to Meta a few years ago, and I think he's still working in Meta. So what I was talking was uh, to introduce these input-output grammars to help to put constraints between the input and the output of the program. And that was actually quite interesting because he has this tool called Isla that works as a solver on top of grammars and it can actually generate specific, um, specific inputs based on a grammar just by sampling the solver. And he was showing how this can be used to identify, for instance, problems with networks, some network protocols, etc., etc. I think it was a quite interesting talk. And he was also presenting this other tool called Avicenna that uh, he mentioned that it's for semantic debugging. Let me just have a look to what is... Oh, yes, 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 now I remember. Yes, so Avicenna basically is, uh, is, is quite interesting because what you are supposed to, to have is like a failing input and you are, have a grammar or, you know, what is supposed to be the expected kind of generation of inputs. And based on that, you can actually generate a specific constraints that the system is trying to minimize and that constraints are going to try to describe the failure of what is happening in the system. 
really, really, really cool because actually you can just start simplifying. You know, imagine that you have a problem and you know what that problem is, but actually it means uh, it, 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 you, you are actually identifying, for instance, heart bleed. And basically what you need to do is just to start iterating the inputs with this specific system for generating, but it will give you an input with the specific constraints that tell you this is the reason why you have this specific error. And actually I think uh, Andrea and his team are presenting this in FSC 2023. So for those who are going to FSC, I think it's going to be, or, or have gone to FSC, I can't remember if FSC has already been or it's going to be. I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, work to read. What else? Oh, also, Andrea was mentioning the debugging book that he has been working for a, quite of a long time. And actually, he has also the fasting book, and there are online books that you can use. And they have uh, also Jupyter Notebooks, where you can actually have some examples. So if you want to actually put some hands on fasting, debugging, etc., you can just go and check the book. It's really, really nice. Okay, so then I attended the, the fasting workshop. So the fasting workshop was organized by uh, Marcel Boe, Yannick Noller, by Saki Ray, and Laszlo Sekeres. So basically this workshop uh, changed a little bit of the structure of what we normally do with papers. So what you do is in this case, in the case of the workshop, you are submitting your paper to the workshop, but the paper is mainly the idea and a contract on that idea with what you want to do. So imagine that I want to do a paper on fuzzing, let's say, uh, I don't know, a paper on fuzzing machine learning. Now I have my approach, okay? Uh, what I'm going to write in the paper is the approach, the experimental setup, obviously the motivation, related work, etc., etc. but I'm not going to provide the results, okay? So once I have the idea of what I want to do and how I'm going to evaluate it, I send it to the workshop, also provide some feedback, decide whether the paper is accepted or not, that will be the stage one, and if the paper is accepted, then you will have an organization, uh, they will organize a specific special issue at TOSEM, the, the, the TOSEM journal, the ACM journal, and basically in that special issue is where you add the results. So if you are actually following the contract of what you mentioned during the, the first stage, no, that was the submission of the workshop, that you will do, and you're actually doing the experiments, of what you have done, even if you have bad results or negative results, uh, if you have followed the specific methodology and you have followed the specific motivation and they think this is a good idea, you should proceed to the publication of the workshop. And there were actually several awards published in this workshop uh, and it was actually very interesting to see how many people have tried to submit papers to this workshop. Oh yes, something that I missed was the, the, the talk from Christian Kadar that was uh, from Imperial College, that was about uh, the free colors of fuzzing. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but those who watched it told me that it was very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, it was at the same time that, uh, that Andrea said I was actually giving the talk that I just mentioned, so fortunately I couldn't attend, but it was basically talking about uh, what are the main challenges of fuzzing at the moment. I think there is a video recording of the talks somewhere. I don't know if they are gonna be published or not, but it will be very interesting if ISTA can actually publish the videos because there are probably several papers that is worth to watch again. From the fasting workshop, there are two papers that I remember. One is for Kostia Cerebrani from Google, who actually created a system that is called Centipide, and the system was testing CPUs and, and uh, sorry, GPUs. Well, actually, it's both, I think. He was able to test GPUs and CPUs. I, I will need to check. But basically, the main idea is that because they have this amazing amount of resources at Google, uh, they were able to identify bugs in CPUs, yeah, I think it was CPU systems, because they were testing maybe with 9,000 or 10,000 of CPUs. And basically the tool, Centipy, was trying to identify coverage signals that were able to tell you whether there was something wrong happening with the system. And the other one that I watched, which was actually also very interesting, was from Alistair Donaldson from Imperial College. Um, in this paper, Alistair was presenting a how by creating alterations on grammars might actually improve the way that you are testing parsers. So for example, imagine that I have a parser that is going to, um, to, to be a parser you know, of JSON, 
And basically what I want to do is just to do some specific alterations of the grammar, okay? And these alterations will allow me to parse sections that the original grammar will never generate. So I'm extending the grammar a little bit to generate like invalid inputs of the of JSON files and this will allow me to check whether the parser have set these inputs and also whether the parser might collapse with these inputs or uh, might not find it valid. So basically remember that these are works that are basically um, pre-agreements and the papers will be published finally once the, 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 the second stage finish of the workshop they will be published finally in the um, in Tosen. So one of the keynotes on the first day that I really liked was from Baisaki Rai from Columbia University. Uh, basically this keynote was basically uh, was trying to provide like an overview about how large language models can actually help to generate codes, to identify bugs, to fit bugs and it was actually a very interesting keynote because also they were working at the assembly level uh, and this is one of the of the samples that the, the keynote speaker was showing. Um, it's actually very interesting because it's showing once more uh, how powerful large language models are and will be in the future. So it's something that is worth to, to, to keep investigating for future applications of this kind of research. Then I went to the fuzzing session and there were actually quite interesting papers about green fuzzing. You can just see a few of the titles here. They were also testing about uh, language models, few shots um, about how language models can be combined with fuzzers. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the fuzzing session was quite interesting. Although, enough for, unfortunately for me, there were all the sessions that might bring more my attention about because of the, of the topics that I'm now working on. I also like the two presentations that were in the afternoon that day, in the first day. Um, one that I found very interesting that I also saw during the two demonstrations was the KD Alloc which is, uh, we was presenting from Daniel Schemmel from Imperial College. Um, basically, this tool is trying to uh, make sure that the non-deterministic behavior of uh, the memory allocators can be fixed when you are trying to identify bugs because sometimes the bug appears and then the bug disappears. So basically what Daniel and his team is do are doing is trying to fix this problem by providing you an allocator that allows you to fix these things. Also because if you want to provide an input, an specific input of this error when you identify the bug and that input stops working because the allocator just changed directions, uh, you, you miss the bug because of the non-determinism. Non but actually thanks to this tool you can have the bug because it can actually reproduce it and tell you, look, this is the bug, the bug is here, just try to fix it. Okay, so this is quite interesting. There were also very interesting tools. I will also mention one of the of the GPU testing tools in a few minutes. On the second day we have like very interesting keynotes. So basically we started with the one, the Easter Impact Paper Award that was done by William G.C. Hanford. And then we continue with the Ato Test of Time Award that was from Andrew P. Black. So basically on the first one, William was talking about uh, source energy consumption of Android apps. But actually I was more interested about the second one because it was like a journey between different programming languages. So Andrew uh, has been working for a very long time on designing programming languages and it was very interesting to see what were the problems through history, through the history of several programming languages. Actually Andrew mentioned something, let me just find the notes, that I really like, he, he gives a quote, quote that he says, language changes the way you think about things. Um, and basically he, he was saying that it is what you want to install in the programmer's head. And, and that's actually quite true, no? Because the way that we are thinking about programming depends on the language that we are using. Actually, I, I normally call um, or mother programming language the other language on behalf of other Lovelace, which is the mother of computer science. And normally when you have this language in your head, just start thinking in that language. So for instance, my, my other language will be C because it's a language that I started to, to, to learn. Obviously, when I change languages, I just speak in, 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 in or, or think in, in Java or Python, etc. But, but when I just think about a program, per se, normally I, I especially easy program, I use C as my uh, main language. 
Unfortunately, I have to be in one of the sessions, and there was another session that I was interested in at the same time, so I just want to mention that I missed uh, one of the talks from the session of deep learning um, and improving deep learning systems. And actually, this talk was from uh, Vincenzo Riccio, that is Deep Attach, Focus Test Generation for Deep Learning System. So this talk, is, I mean, I will read the paper because I, I, I know more or less about the work. I was also talking with, with Vincenzo about it. Um, basically, it's about focus testing, which is one of the areas which I've been working before. So it's a, it's a pity that I missed that, that session, but I was at the same time in the automatic driving session, which is the one that I want to mention now. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of the papers that I found more interested during the automatic driving session, let me just go. Sorry, it was not really a session about automatic driving, it was another session about testing. So the first paper was uh, about how to test speech to text and text to speech. And actually it was quite interesting, let me just see my notes, some of the, of the D speech models that he was using. So for example, when he was using audio to text, he was using models like D speech plus WAF letter plus plus and what's to back to. So I will just put them there on the system. And when he was doing the opposite, when he was doing text to audio, he was using eSpeak, Festival, Google DTS, and Glow DTS. But basically, the one that was the most productive one was uh, Google DTS. And, and it was very funny because during the presentation, the, the, the speaker was using Google DTS to put some, some portions of the, of the presentation, just, uh, just to, to give you like an overview of how good these systems are for synthesizing. But when you want to test these methods, how to replace the human in the loop, by the automatic AIs. So you can see that now all of these models are coming to the playground for testing also. Then we have a work called FISCO, Physical Test Coverage for Autonomous Vehicles. And in this work, what the authors wanted to do is to provide like an overview uh, of a new metrics for physical coverage because you have like infinite possibilities when you are doing coverage with the smart cars. So basically they just want to provide a specific solution. Just to mention some of the tools that they were using or the data they were using BIM ANG, like the simulator, Waymo, like the data set. And it was interesting to see that there was a very good new metric for physical coverage. It's a paper that I think is worth exploring. Then we have the second paper, that is Behavior AV Explore, Behavior Diversity Guided Testing for Autonomous Driving System. So in this case, they were focused on using the SL Build Simulator and the EAD Apollo. So what basically what they were actually describing in this paper, I, I have the opportunity to speak with the author, what they were describing in this paper was how to create like a time series to describe the behavior and try to find similar behaviors depending on how, for instance, the speed change in that time series and that will give you like a kind of equivalent class to reduce potential behavior. It was quite interesting um, and they obtained very good results, otherwise <laughs> they wouldn't be a lista. Um, then, I really like the next one, which is building critical testing scenarios for autonomous driving for real accidents. So on this one, they were able to take video images and create a whole 3D representation of the scenario of what's happening to reproduce accidents. And also they were using Apollo for the scenario recovery process and Deep Lab V2 for the testing. There was also an interesting paper about VR testing, but I'm not going to go deeper on that one. And there was also an interesting paper about uh, how to use concepts to create uh, first year students. And it was actually uh, a paper that tried to summarize the process of, uh, actually not try to improve the process of marking students when they have actually the code right, instead of using just test cases. Um, and it was interesting just to watch it because they were using a lot of semantic information of the program. So then I went to the fasting session and actually I went also because my, my colleague Karin won the Distinguished Paper Award. And the paper is called Grace and uh, the person who was presenting the paper is Arindan Sharma from Imperial College. So just to give you a little overview of the session, basically first we started with this paper of guiding grey box fasting. So the main idea of guiding grey box fasting with mutation testing was to use mutant kill it to guide the fasting. And, and, and they were applying this to the JQF tool by using differential fasting. So it was, it was interesting. Um, then 
we have another word that was on rare path guided fasting. And actually the main goal was to create seeds using solvers that were actually targeting rare paths. So then the faster can use those seeds to identify or improve coverage faster, which is actually a very nice idea. And uh, by itself is simple, but obviously it has the overload of the solvers. But that was considered during the experiments, which is actually something very important. Then there was another one that it was uh, finding source low input faster with grammar-based fuzzing. Uh, there was one very interesting that was fuzzing embedded system with debug interfaces. This one was presented by Max Aisel. And basically what they were doing, this is actually very interesting, was they wanted to fuzz microcontrollers. Um, and, and they needed to get the feedback from the microcontroller. So they were using the GDB debugger in the microcontroller and the connection with the debugger. So every time that they, they, they created like a representation of the control flow graph, they put a limited number of breakpoints because they have to put a limited number of breakpoints uh, by the limitation of the controllers, I think, of the debugger. And basically the debugger was telling them, giving them some information about the feedback of the coverage. And with that, they were able to create the faster. And they were able to identify very, very interesting bugs there. So then we have Grace. So Grace, what Grace was using was to mutate some functions in order to improve the fuzzing coverage. And actually the mutation was actually combining functions in a very smart way with the mutation and the reconstruction of the function. And it was based on the AST, it was based on AST mutations. And this actually helped them to identify a lot of errors inside of compilers. And last but not least, there was one about fast in the learning compilers with Hirschgen, that basically the idea was to do fast in an intermediate representation of the deep learning algorithms in order to identify potential bugs in the deep learning system, like TensorFlow, etc. Okay, so now let's talk about what happened in the last day. And actually in the last day, I was presenting. So obviously I was in that session. So it's likely that I miss a lot of nice papers. Okay, so first of all, we have a keynote speaker in the morning that was Sofia Drosopoulou from Imperial College. And she was talking a lot about her career and how she was actually improving different aspects of uh, languages, which was actually very, very interesting. So then is when we pass to the sessions in the, in the afternoon after the coffee break. Then we have my session that was on test optimizations. To mention some of the papers, all of them were very interesting, but I, the, the, there were two actually that I really want to, to, to mention. Uh, one was just the paper that was before mine that were from, um, that was called Applying and Extending the Delta Debugging Algorithm for Elevator Dispatching Algorithms. It was an experience paper and it was a very interesting paper of finding bugs in elevators using Delta Debugging. And actually, it was from, from a collaboration between industry and academia from people from Mondragon. And the authors were Pablo Valle, Aitor Arrieta, and Maite Arratibel. So basically, the, the idea was how to make sure that you can find the minimum uh, information on the temporal behavior of the, of the leaf in order to identify the bug in a leaf. And it was very, very good, very precise. And it's actually applied for real, to real data and real problems that we all have because we hate being waiting for leaves all of the time. If you work in London, you might have noticed this. So it's something that has multiple applications. And there was also another paper that I found very interesting that was one of the distinguished papers. And it was the paper at the end. It was uh, presented by Rhys Levin from the University of California in Santa Cruz. And the paper was the GPU Harbor testing GPU memory consistency at large. And this one was the distinguished artifact of the conference. So basically, uh, RIS did a demonstration with the, with the artifact, which was amazing. So you basically access the web GPU interface of the tool, and you were actually running the experiments and checking whether your GPU might have a specific problems. And what they were checking was the coherence during the execution of the the, the specific instruction of the GPU. And he was showing that just for very simple pieces of code, you can have the coherence in terms of how the things should be executed. Because if you have 
a b in one thread and c d in another thread sometimes you have that the order of the execution in the same thread was inverted by just checking the solution that the system was providing to you it was a very interesting paper may i say um, and then also you have my paper that uh, is June, uh, that is at the stability of transformation to improve automatic test generation tools. Basically what we were doing was sanitizing strings on the fly. So we had like a small library that just fixed the string on the fly and basically you put an input uh, that is going to be sanitized in the process of execution and that improves coverage of any ATG that is basically using uh, guide-based covering in order to improve the system. I also want to mention that there were also many sessions that were online during ISTA and unfortunately I cannot stay on Friday because I have to go back to London so there are also some papers that I'm missing. Again, if there is any paper that you find interesting please don't forget to add it into the comments and just put it there just to, to mention so we can do something more interactive. Also, don't forget to subscribe, etc., etc., so you can just get more information and check the other videos that you might have around. Okay, so that's everything from me. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.